Welcome to Excel Business Statistical Analysis video number eight. And in this video, we're going to talk about scatter plots to reveal a relationship between two quantitative variables. And you are not going to believe. I'll show you how to do it manually. And then we'll use Microsoft Artificial Intelligence Analyze Data feature to automatically create these scatter plots. Now, our first example has this data set. We've collected for 15 students the hours they spent studying for a final exam, and then the final exam test score. So each record represents a student. Here, this student studied 16 hours and got a score on the final of 88. But here's the thing. If we suspect that there's a relationship between hours studied and test scores, for example, we might suspect that as hours studied goes up, test scores tend to go up. Or maybe it's as hours studied goes up, test scores tend to go down. Or maybe as we look through the student records, there'll be no pattern or relationship at all. Well, we don't know until we look at the data for some evidence. Now, this is what the scatter chart will look like when we're done. With the x variable on the horizontal axis and the y variable on the vertical axis, we can see the relationship with this visualization. And here it looks like as our studied increases, the test score tends to increase. Now, this type of relationship is called a direct or positive relationship. We can get different types of relationships, though. Here's the as hours studied increases, test scores tend to increase. Here's an example where we plotted absences in the class against the final grade. So as the absences in the class tend to increase, the grade tends to decrease. This type of relationship is called indirect or inverse or negative. Here's an example where we plotted customer age and amount spent and there doesn't seem to be any relationship. Here's another direct or positive relationship. It looks like as the number of ads on the radio during the week increases, the car sales tend to increase. Now, when we create a scatter chart, we're comparing two quantitative variables to see if there's a relationship. We have those two quantitative variables. The horizontal axis is called the independent variable or predictor variable, or x value. The vertical axis is the dependent variable or the predicted variable, sometimes known as f of x or y. And very importantly, we have two numbers that we're plotting, one on each axis. Now, I mention that because the number one mistake when plotting x and y to create a scatter plot is highlighting the data set, insert, and instead of scatter, people use the line chart. A line chart is for one number on the vertical axis. x, y scatter, that's for two variables. One on the x, one on the y. Now, when we do this, it's automatic. But as you probably remember from your algebra class, if we take this record right here, there's the x. So you actually count out along the x out to 16. Then with the y value of 88, from that point, you count up to 88. Then you put a marker. In an xy scatter chart, when you hover over the marker, you could see it shows you the x, 16, and the y, 88. Another important thing is that when you set up your data set, the x has to be on the left, the y on the right. If you have the y on the left and the x on the right, the chart will plot the y on the horizontal and the x on the vertical, which is incorrect. And also, when we plot the xy data, we don't have to summarize first like we did with our cross tab. We just plot the raw data points. And in fact, if you have xy data in a pivot table and then try to create a chart, the charting engine won't let you do it. All right, let's see how to create this xy scatter chart. On the sheet SCP, we have a data set here, and I want to exclude students so we don't click in a single cell. We highlight just the x and y columns, go up to Insert, Chart Group. And if we have raw data and we're trying to see a relationship, we use Scatter. 
But if we have an XY scatter model built with formulas like a fixed cost, variable cost model, then we use scatter with smooth lines. But we want scatter. Click. Now, this chart came out of the box as a fixer upper because it's missing important elements for an XY scatter chart. And the most important things it's missing is the X and Y labels. We need to know what both numbers represent. So the first thing I'm going to do is go up to the green plus and check axis titles. The Y axis is selected with a solid line, so I type an equal sign and then click on the label for the Y variable and Enter. I'll do the same thing for X. That's already looking much better. The chart title, I'm going to select it, equal sign, and have a really long label in cell M8 and Enter. Control-Shift-F because I want to change the font size to 10 and Enter. Now, is there a relationship between hours studied and test score? That's a good chart title. But I also put a description of the relationship. And this is a direct or positive relationship, because as x increases, y increases. Now, that's the visualization for a scatter plot right there. That's all we're learning how to do in this chapter. Later in this class, we'll learn how to create formulas to create the regression line correlation and R squared. However, in an Excel scatter chart, there's a built-in capability to show the line and the equation. If we go up to the green plus, we can check trend line. If we select the line very carefully and use Control-1, it'll open up the task pane. We definitely want linear. And let's check the box for display equation and display R squared. Come over, and we'll use our Move cursor to move it somewhere down below. And then with that selected, Control-1. And I want to change the fill. I'll say Solid, White. So I guess I already have it as white. And then Border, Solid Line, and Black. Now, later, we'll manually calculate all these things so we can use them to create a predictive model. But bam, there it is. From our XY scatter data, we created a scatter chart with correct labels and title, and even showed the regression line, the equation, and R squared. Now, all of this was done manually, which sometimes that's how you have to do it. Now, this sheet was scatter chart positive because we have a positive relationship here. Let's go over to scatter chart positive 2. Here we have number of ads on the radio during the week and car sales. Let's click in a single cell, because here we only have x and y. And in fact, I definitely want to change the labels up here. This is the x, because we're thinking that the more ads we have, the higher the car sales will be. At least we're hoping that. That's why we collected our data. And now we want to create an xy scatter to visually see, hopefully, that the relationship is positive. Now, for this example, we're going to go up to the Home Ribbon tab over to Analysis. And when we click Analyze Data, internally, Microsoft's Artificial Intelligence, AI for short, looks at the data and tries to find patterns and then create pivot table reports and Excel charts. So I'm going to click this button. It sometimes takes a while. And this is obvious to the AI. And so right at the top, it looks like we have our XY scatter. So I'm going to click Insert Chart. And this is absolutely amazing. For decades, I've been creating XY scatters and manually putting the labels. But it got both of these perfect. Even the title at the top, Fields, it names the X field and this field up here highly correlated. Now, we'll learn how to calculate correlation later. And that'll tell us the strength of either the positive or negative relationship. But that Analysis Analyze Data button did an amazing job. Now, let's go try scatter chart with a negative relationship. At least we're thinking absences in class versus grade in class. So I'm going to click in a single cell, Home, Analyze button. It looks like this is the chart we want. Notice it creates XY scatter, a pivot table, a bar chart over here. But we want this first one. So I'm going to click Insert Chart. 
Now, the title didn't come out quite as nice, but this is an acceptable title. Final grade y, that's the predicted variable, by absences in the class, the x variable. And it got both of the labels correct. It looks like we have a negative relationship here. Here's another way, instead of using the green plus, if you come over to one of the markers and right click, add trend line, it'll add the trend line and open the task pane. And then I can click equation and R squared. Move it over here, control one, format this a bit. And that as a visualization of XY scatter data is looking good. Now let's try one more. SC, no, for there's probably no relationship here. Home, analyze data. And this one looks OK, but I don't like the chart title. Down here, there's some column charts. But watch this. This is a great trick. I'm going to type using the field names what I want up here. And hopefully, Analyze Data will give me a better chart. XY scatter amount spent, that'll be the Y variable, by customer age. And now when I hit Enter, that is amazing. Insert chart. And it clearly looks like there is not a relationship. In fact, if you right click Add Trend Line and check Equation in R squared, with R squared at 0 and a horizontal line, clearly there's no relationship. All right, in this video, we saw four different data sets with x and y data. And we plotted that data on an xy scatter chart. And we saw three of them using the Analyze Data button. Here we got no relationship. Here we got a positive relationship between number of ads and sales. Over here, we observed that as absences increase in a class, the class grade tends to go down. That's a negative or inverse or indirect relationship. And we started it off with a direct or positive relationship. As hours studied increase, test score increased also. All right, we'll see you next video.